Welcome back everybody. My name is Nick, this is Swiffle Thinking, and we are in the advanced learning playlist and we're taking a look at advanced concepts. This concept in particular is very advanced and I would say definitely not needed to build Swift or Swift UI applications. So if you're a junior developer and you just started Swift UI, this is probably not the video for you because it's knowledge that you really don't need to know, although it's pretty cool to know. So we're gonna take a look at custom operators. So in Swift, there are tons of operators that come by default in the language. This is like the plus sign, the minus sign, the divided sign, the multiplication sign. Those are operators. And in the Swift language, we can actually build out and use our own custom operators. So again, this is not something that you need to know. This is not something that I would even use in most applications, but it's really cool to know, and you can even mess with some of your friends because I guarantee most of the Swift developers you know do not know how to do this. Partly because we don't really need to do this ever, but also partly because they're just not as good as you at writing code. And we know that, right? You know that, I know that. Anyway, let's take a look at writing custom operators. We're gonna do some basic ones. We're gonna do some more complex ones. We're gonna make this quick because it is not fundamental. It is not super important. But for one last time, I wanna remind you guys, hit that subscribe button, please. This is free advanced content. It's very difficult to make and it really helps me out if you hit that subscribe button and or hit the alert button and leave a like because why not? It's free content for me, free for you to click that button. Let's jump into Xcode and write some custom operators. And we are back. Welcome back, everyone. It is Friday night, 11.45 p.m. It's almost midnight. And we're cruising through the advanced learning playlist. This video is going to be super quick. We're going to look at custom operators. We're not learning this because it's needed to build Swift applications. And actually in every app, in almost every single application I've ever written, I have not used these, but I've recently learned how to do this. And I think it's really cool and kind of just fun to play around with. So maybe this is kind of just my nerdy side speaking, but I'm sure someone out there is going to enjoy this video as well. Let me know in the comments if you do, even if you're probably never going to use it in a real project. So let's right click the navigator, create a new file and create a Swift UI view. Let's call this one custom operator bootcamp. Let's click create. Let's close the navigator and write a little bit of code here. I'm going to create an at state private var. Let's make it a value of type double, set it equal to zero. And on the screen here, I'm just going to keep it super simple. Let's put the value on the screen. Cool. On up here, I'm going to run some code, super simple code. We're first going to set value equal to five plus five. And as you probably guessed, the value is 10. Now in this line of code here, we use an operator. We use the plus sign as the addition operator. We also have value equals five divided by two. 2.5, the division, the divided sign here is an operator. Now think about this just as this is just a, another key on your keypad, right? But the Swift language inherently knows that this is going to be division and that's what we're telling it to do. We can also, we can also combine operators like maybe five plus five divided by two equals five. Awesome. But I bet you didn't know that in Swift, we could actually create our own custom operators. Now, if I look at the documentation for like a floating point, so a double is actually a floating point, and I look for the plus sign, we can see here is a static function called plus sign that takes a left-hand sign and a right-hand sign and returns a final value. So this, this is literally just a function called plus. And this is a function with the minus sign. This is a function with the multiplication sign. And we could probably guess the code inside these functions, right? When we're adding two floats, we know what that code is going to be. It's going to be the left plus the right. What we can actually do is create our own custom functions just like that. So we're going to use some new syntax here that I honestly did not know, but ChatGPT knows pretty well. And if you just Google it, you'll find that we have to write something called an infix operator. Is just mean this basically just telling the compiler that the operator we're about to use, so like a division sign or a plus sign, is going to be an operator and it's not going to be your normal text in code. 
So we're going to make maybe, let's do this. This is going to be plus divided by two. So let's call this maybe plus divide. And then let's create an extension of floating point, just like we were just looking at here. Doubles conform to floating point. So we'll be able to use this. And we're going to create a static funk, just like we just saw called plus divided. And it's going to take the left hand side. Actually, let's go back into the floating point and we can actually just look for that plus sign again. And I'm just going to copy the static funk here. Jump back, static funk, let's call this plus divided. The left-hand side will be of type self, which is floating point. The right-hand side will be of type self, which is floating point. And we'll return self, which is also a floating point. And this custom operator plus divided is gonna do this. So in this one, we're going to take two numbers. So five is gonna be the left-hand side and then five, which will be the right-hand side and then divide it by two. So I'm just going to copy this. And we're just gonna take the left-hand side and the right-hand side. So in my code now, I'm gonna do value equals five plus divided by five. And so this is gonna, I'm gonna take the left-hand plus the right-hand and then divide it by two. And we can see that this five is on the screen. Just to test that, let's change this to maybe six and two. So eight divided by two should be four and it looks like it's working. We can maybe make another variation of this to do maybe plus plus. And we're getting an error here. Operator implementation without matching declaration. It's because we didn't make an infix operator. So we should just put this up here as well. And maybe in the plus plus, we're actually just going to add this, the left-hand side twice and divide it by the right-hand side. So let's do left-hand side plus left-hand side divided by right hands. So now I could do something like value equals, let's do five plus plus divided by two. This is gonna be five plus five divided by two, which is five. Let's do six plus six divided by two is six. But six plus six is 12 divided by three is gonna give us four. So again, this is something that's like kind of confusing because this is going to be unique to your application. So I most of the time do not make my own operators, but I think it's really cool that we can do things like this in the Swift language. Is It's almost like if you're building your own libraries, you could kind of almost create your own language, if you will. I'm going to show you guys two more examples and then we're just going to move on because this is fun, but not super useful in my mind. We can create another one. Let's do a static funk here. Let's do maybe three carats. And let's make an infix operator of the three carats. And here we're going to maybe make this function. We're going to call the max. And we're going to get the max of the left-hand side and the right-hand side. So now in my code, instead yeah. of saying value equals max of three, five, right? Now I can do value equals three carat, 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 five. Cool. One more cool, quick example we're going to run through is maybe we have a, let's call it an integer. Let's call this some value of type int equals five. And then we want to set the value equal to some value. We can't do this because this is of type integer. This is of type double. And so we wrap it with a double and it obviously worked, right? But I could actually create a custom operator to do this function from an integer. So, so I'm going to come down here and this time we need to extend the integer value. So we're going to create an extension of binary integer and we'll create a, let's create an infix operator called maybe Let's do equal sign arrow. This is a, this is a little funky syntax and let's create our static funk. Let's call this one equal sign arrow. And we want to return the type that we're converting it to. So let's do double real quick. And instead of having a left hand and a right hand side, we're going to customize this. We're going to pass in a value 
of type self, which will be the integer itself. And then let's pass in the new value, the new type that we want it to become, which will be of type t dot type. Now, now, of course, we're making a generic function of type t, so it's not a double, it's t. And now we need to make sure that t, whatever type we're passing in, can be initialized from the binary integer. So let's create a quick protocol called init from binary floating point. This is just a quick example, guys. And, in, and to conform to this protocol, we're going to look at the double implementation here. We're going to go down to the init here, and we can see that it is init with that takes a source where source is binary integer. I'm going to copy and paste that into the protocol. So now let's create an extension of double that actually conforms to init from binary floating point. And double already has that initializer. We just copied it from the double documentation. So now T is going to be declared as any type that conforms to init from binary floating point. And now we can use this initializer in our code. And sorry, the type that we want to return here is actually the new type, T. All right, let's go back up to our code. Right now we can run it like this. And now we can set a value equal to some value and then convert it into a double dot self. Cool. That's all for this video. I just wanted to show you guys how you can create your own operators. Again, I don't think this is super useful in applications. We're kind of just having fun here being nerds, but I think it's cool. I think it's fun to know. And if you really want to confuse some of your friends, create some of these and show them a project and let them try to figure out what's going on. Anyway, thank you guys for watching. As always, my name is Nick. This is Swiffle Thinking, and I'll see you in the next video. Thank you.